Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Adobe Live APAC. Uh, before we get going, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to elders past, present and emerging. We are back with Bill, two days in a row, Bill, for part two. Yes, yes. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing very well. How are you, Joanna? Doing very, very well. Excited for the, the Christmas season can now begin, like we were saying yesterday, as soon as there's the Christmas Apex streams, that's that's when you know the season has come. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Looking forward to getting into this uh, second half of our, our festive stream. Um, so yesterday we were working on, uh, um, we've got kind of a two-parter. Um, yesterday mm. was working on the character Krampus, the sort of... Um, nefarious alter ego of Santa and we've got a much more jolly positive character to work on today we're going to be working on the man himself Santa um, to, to finish off this um, uh, this duo so um, yeah looking forward to getting into it fantastic now I just want to give a, a shout out to chat we've got Rin, Manny, Alessandra, Misty hello hello welcome of course if you have any questions at all about uh, St Nicholas, Krampus drawing uh or just you know any inquiries at all feel free to ask your questions in the chat and we will do our best to answer them but i think that's that's enough of the uh, formalities let's get into the festivities get into the sketching fantastic okay <laughs> um yeah and definitely uh, we'll be doing a similar kind of thing to yesterday where i'll just be kind of going through a bit of my process uh finishing off these characters and adding some details um but i'm sure we'll get through that pretty quick so if you've got any suggestions for how do we could add to this overall scene definitely let us know we're keen to um sketch some, some new things in um and if you've got any questions about the process or the tools i'm using or anything like that just chuck them in the chat and we'll we'll go through that as well but um yeah i'll jump into it now so um you can see kind of where we got up to yesterday we were flushing out this this uh, evil looking dude um <laughs> and um uh today we're we're working on santa here so i'll just kind of go through the steps if i drop off a few layers we started off um, with uh, a really looty gooty sketch. I'll, I'll show my um, back of the. <laughs> I um, love it so much. Um, it's so sweet. Sketches that, that got us started. Um, and we had a, a much looser sketch here, uh, going into something a bit more um, detailed. Um, and finally, I started adding in uh, the, the, the overall line work here. So I'm going to jump straight back into that and uh, yeah, start working on um, Santa's face and I've just left a bit of the hand there as well. So I'm going to pull up my brushes and um, for this kind of line work, I'm keeping it super, super simple. I'm using the most basic sort of just straight circular brush in Photoshop. And uh, yeah, we'll start, we'll start knocking it away. Um, uh, um, uh, I love ones like this where we get to sort of contrast these two characters. So um, uh, if we had um, Krampus over here before, he's all kind of hard angular lines and uh, everything sort of directing in towards the center of the face. But with Santa, he's a much more cheerful character. So everything's going to be a bit more open and loose. It's not going to be quite so intense, but we'll try and get some of those big uh, wispy eye eyebrows in there anyway. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't have a, a St. Nicholas without those eyebrows, I think. No. No, definitely not. And we're keeping everything sort of nice and rounded, makes it feel like a sort of more gentle, uh, approachable kind of character here. Um, all right, let me work in on these eyes here. Something I've started doing uh, more recently is, um, I don't know, I only used to sort of put big eyelashes on um, uh, female characters, but um, uh, pretty much anybody with some big eyelashes on them makes them look a, a little bit more cute and cheerful. So I'm, yeah. I'm all about putting some little little sort of ticks up at the end of the eyes there. Um, Gorgeous. And I, I think actually in, in real life, if I'm not mistaken, um, men generally do have sometimes even more impressive eyelashes than, than women. We have to use mascara to get the same effect that, that some of you have naturally. Ah, interesting. I haven't really thought of that. Or so yeah. I've heard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Sorry, allegedly. <laughs> I've, I've been alerted to this by my um, uh, my Caboodle, who's made an entrance on the, the stream before Acorn. He's got the most yeah. incredible um, eyebrows. Let's, let's just go with a quick puppy portrait here. So um, yes. I'll quickly uh, sketch out. Um, 
a little bit of acorn cavoodle and he's got i'm like this is not exaggerating whatsoever <laughs> like this it's ridiculous um, they are he's this very cute little puppy and absurd eyelashes so um Adorable. I'm, I'm a big fan anyway <laughs> maybe he can make an entrance later so, i think he might have to <laughs> i do quite a lot of uh um um uh corporate drawing where i sort of go into um uh corporate offices and and um draw live at lots of workshops and events and things like this mm -hmm. and often it's it's quite sort of technical stuff or sort of business jargon that you're trying to draw i'm sort of drawing you know innovative teams working together and all this kind of stuff but um i have found that even even in the most corporate circumstances if you just start drawing puppies for people everyone's pretty happy it doesn't doesn't have to be related to what people are talking about whatsoever mm. yeah, no always, one's going to complain about puppies <laughs> no everyone's just happy to see a puppy drawn um all right and the chat is no different we've got uh manny being like acorn <laughs> uh, so i think i think i'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that that is definitely a suggestion for acorn to make a appearance late in well, that's, great. Yeah, that's, a, that's a bit of a I've, I've done plenty of acorn drawings in my time, so um, um, <laughs> I think that's something I can fulfill. Excellent. Right. We're kind of uh, looking, Santa's kind of got a inquisical air. He's looking kind of up, so we're seeing uh, him from the bottom there. So I've got the eyebrows raised and um, as he's sort of leaning back, you're not going to see much over the top of his forehead. So I'm just mm. kind of clean the head there. Um, and then I might start working in his, um, his, uh, big, uh, fuzzy beard here. <laughs> I was talking a little bit last stream about, um, how this drawing is kind of interesting for the, um, variety of kinds of fur that we've got on display. So I'm only drawing with one simple line brush, but I've got to try and describe all kinds of different sorts of fur or, or, or hair. So, um, with, with his beard, I'm sort of going through these sort of big curly shapes like so. Mm. Um, and I'm gonna use those as kind of like a motif through the beard so it's identifiable as as one kind of hair and lots of uh, curls, I suppose, in there as well. <laughs> lots of curly shapes. But then with something like, uh, we've got the fuzz on the pom-pom, that's kind of one kind of thing where I'm going at those short little dashes like that. Mm. I've kind of done that all through Santa's costume, those sort of little short dashes. And then we were talking about yesterday on Krampus's one where it was much more sort of look of kind of like matted hair or sort of mm. like falling apart uh, cloth and things like that. And I find that stuff interesting because there's lots of, it's just a very subtle way of changing your mark making to sort of like add a bit of additional character. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll keep going and my... I noticed with your mark making as well, uh, even in the face and not just on the outline of, of the character you do, uh, have a mix of very light lines and very thick lines. Is there, is there any, I suppose, tip for making that balance of when to use a really thick line and when to use a thin line? Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, obviously with uh, the, the lines that have more um, sort of weight or significance or ones that you want to be clearly visible. So something like the line of the, the mouth, I want that to be sort of clearly identifiable. So I'll make that quite thick and around the top of the, the the eyelids, things like that. And ones that I sort of want to sit in the background a little bit more, like the wrinkles and things like that, I'll keep light. Um, having a sort of thick line around the outside kind of holds the picture together a little bit more. There's no sort of strict rules to it, but that's that's the way I like to um, like to do it. Fantastic. And little dotted highlights into this character. Great. Yes, a little glint. Glint in his eyes. Eye, mandatory. Um, now I'm going to draw uh, his his hand, and I'll try and describe some of the choices I'm making with the the, the line making it here. If we can sort of get into the weeds with some of this stuff. Mm. So um, um, we've got his hand holding the pen. So it's going to be kind of all crunched up because he's he's holding um, holding that pen. But he's kind of a a big chunky character Santa. So I'm not gonna try it. I'm gonna make sure that I, I used to draw all my fingers. I had one client describe them as, can you please remove the goblin hands from all the characters? Oh no. <laughs> all my hands sort of ended in little points like this and they were all kind of, yeah, well, they, they, it was pretty accurate. It was sort of goblin hands. <laughs> um, uh, so with this, I'm gonna try and avoid goblin hands. I'm gonna go for more kind of sausage fingers. 
Um, so I'm sort of drawing that, that middle finger here and I'm going to make sure all my lines are kind of a little bit um, uh, is it convex or concave. Anyway, rounded outwards. Um, uh, okay. so there's, yes. there's no harsh um, lines there. And I'm going to sort of think about some really subtle things like um, it's going to have some big knuckles. These are big uh, masculine hands that I'm drawing, but because he's a little bit pudgy, I'm going to soften the lines between the knuckles. They don't really stand mm. out big, but it's sort of soft around them. Um, so I'm going to use a couple of little lines to just describe the, the weight of the, the, the knuckles that I'm drawing there. And then I'm drawing some folds in the finger of the hand here, but I'm keeping those kind of loose to, again, give a sense of kind of volume. Um, so just working some of the details of the fingers. And then when you squeeze your hand up, you make a sort of little pillow shape um, at the, the, the bottom here. So I'm going to make sure I articulate that as well on the hand with a couple extra lines. Um, and uh, do you know what I mean? It's kind of like a big doughy hand that we're trying to do. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, and again, it just adds uh, a kind of feeling of uh, sort of cuddliness to this character, hopefully overall. Yeah, wow. I'm just, as someone who has always struggled drawing hands, oh, or it still is in the learning process, I suppose, of drawing hands. I'm oh, just cool. amazed at Gross. how quickly yeah. <laughs> this came right. together. Um, uh, someone asked about whether I do my line work all in the same layer, and for the most part I do, but sometimes it is a lot easier to sort of separate things out. So for something like this where I'm drawing the pen that's going to be held in his hand, I just find it a lot easier to draw it um, drawn flat, and then I'll rotate it and move it into shape, mm. um, and I can sort of hold down shift to make nice straight lines. So that's what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of drawing that pen separately. And now I'm going to kind of warp it to just the shape that I want it and I'll get it into place. Um, so I'm just doing a little bit of warpy warpy. Um, and then I'll just erase the bits that I that aren't going to be showing of that. Mm. And, and I then, imagine since you're working on, on such a quite a large canvas size that you're not too worried about the, the pixelation that you get from uh, transforming and scaling the, the fountain pen. No, exactly, exactly. And and if I was going for a really detailed pen, I could I could make it really big like this and mm. sort of get all the filigree that I wanted or something, <laughs> and then shrink that down um, if I wanted to add a little bit more detail for myself. So it's a perfectly valid way of, of working. All right, let me just get the last couple strands of that beard in place, and um, yeah, we'll be good to start the uh, the coloring process. Fantastic. Now, we do have a question from the chat um, from the wonderful Alessandra. Um, let me just find it here. Yes. Have you always drawn digitally, Bill? Have you drawn traditionally before? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. Uh, thanks, Alessandra. Um, I uh, have not always drawn digitally. I definitely um, was drawing exclusively on paper for a long time. Um, and I'm, I, I love working on paper, and I love working digitally, I, I, I don't see any reason to value one over the other, I think they're both really good ways of working. Um, the only thing that I'd say about the, the difference between, I was talking to someone the other day who was quite good at drawing, and they were drawing all digitally, but they're saying they really struggled with the confidence of their lines. Mm -hmm. They were sort of doing drawings where they were um, uh, they kind of knew what they wanted to draw. Sorry, I'm just uh, losing things on different windows. Um, but I'll try and show you what I mean. Um, they were, so they were drawing digitally, but they were sort of um, overworking everything. They couldn't decide on sort of where they wanted their line to be. They just sort mm. of were constantly sort of building up on something and they, they didn't feel like they had the confidence in their line. Um, and I think uh, because I spent years and years just drawing with a brush in ink on paper, you don't really have any, um, uh, you don't get any second tries with that. You just have to sort of try and get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. and because I spent many years drawing with ink on paper, um, I kind of got used to the feeling of like just having to commit to a line. Um, and I think that's really helped me in some ways in um, sort of having that background and drawing on paper and then bringing that into digital. I think I can work quite fast because I'm, uh, I don't have that feeling of like always, 
I can always rework that line. I mm -hmm. kind of have it in my head. I want to get it right the first time. So, I mean, that, that's kind of been a little bit of my experience, but um, um, no, I mean, um, yeah, I, I love I love working both ways. Sorry, I hope that answers the, the question. Um, yes, Alessandra, let me know uh, if you have any follow-up questions um, with that, or if we, we did an all right job yeah. answering it. I, I can definitely relate to the, um, just the ability to go control Z to, you know, infinity uh, yeah, yeah. can sometimes just really get you stuck in a piece because it just, you want to get it just right. And surely, like, it's very likely that you did get it right, maybe the first or the second try in some cases. But because you have that advantage of just redoing it again and again without much consequence, um, you do. So it's it's a tricky tricky balance. They they both both traditional and digital have their their quirks and benefits. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's 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 a really tricky thing. And I think because a lot of the work that I do is um, sort of um, like uh, I'm working to a deadline a lot of the time. Like the uh, I kind of think of it in my head as like what's what's the best job I can do given the time that I have, not what's mm. the best job I can do in total, if you know what I mean. Um, and when you're working on personal projects where you have all the time that you want, um, yeah, you can definitely fall into that trap. Um, but um, uh, it is it is nice sometimes even just making a um, an artificial deadline for yourself. Like I'm just going to do what I can in the next hour or something. Because I think a lot of drawing is about um repetition like mm. just sort of, uh so if you can only draw do a drawing that you feel like is a uh c plus kind of drawing at the time um it's better to do 10 c plus drawings instead of one a plus drawing if you know what i mean like, like sort of doing it over and over again until it, it slowly improves um all right so um while i've been chatting i've just been using the lasso tool to sort of select areas and then i'm filling those with color and I'm just making sure that I'm doing each of those on a separate layer. We talked about this a bit last stream of um, sort of keeping uh, those layers separate um, so they're easier to access and to um, um, edit as we go along. Um, this is just how I feel like working on this piece. Um, uh, some people will work all on the same layer, but um, whatever, whatever works for you. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of depends on the the goal of the of what you're working on and and sort of the the final outcome as well i can imagine yeah yeah definitely um and because we're on the stream i'm, I'm sort of preferencing speed a little mm -hmm. bit um uh over other things um so uh yeah just getting as much as we can done in the time okay that's looking pretty good um i'm just going to clean up a couple little sections of santa that have um, got out of control, um, <laughs> and I will um, um, just fill in some of the colors. Uh, one way to, to speed up your coloring as well is that if you've got nice, neat line work like this, you can turn on, um, if I'm using the paint bucket tool, I don't want to fill the whole background, but I can just click the all layers tab um, in the paint bucket tool, and then it'll just paint into the areas of all layers, and that really speeds up a lot. Oh. Not a, it's not a perfect way of coloring, but um, um, if you're in a rush, it's a it's a great way to do it. There you go. Um, wow, you just uh, twenty minutes in and already learning something new. Oh, it's, a, it's essential. <laughs> that one's absolute lifesaver. And uh, do a little bit more of that here. Just uh, fill in the uh, the nice list. <laughs> um, I assume you'll be on this list. Joanna? Um, I am. Um, I'm hoping so. That's what I've been uh, planning for all year yeah. is to okay. be on the nice list. <laughs> is there anything particular on your, your nice list this year? Is there something you're planning on getting, hoping to get? Um, I was thinking about this and actually um, <laughs> you've stolen my question, Bill. Oh, yeah? Because <laughs> I was going to ask you what you want for Christmas. Um, I think... Hmm. You put me on the spot. I'm going to have to think about 
think about that one for a little bit. But I have a question for you. Speaking of、uh, presents for Christmas potentially,、uh, Misty's wondering if you have any new books coming out. Oh, thank you, Misty.、Uh, I'll I'll pay you later. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, well, I have had a book come out this this Christmas,、um, uh, but it's、uh, it's like a a re-release, so it's a new edition of a, of, a, of a previous book. So we've added some new characters in, and there's a couple new pages in there,、um, and、uh, that's called、um, uh, Where's Santa's Elf? It's the new edition of that. So、oh, if you're in Australia, get down to your local Big W or Target, and you can find Where's Santa's Elf. Fantastic. Well, you heard it here first, chat. Where's Santa's Elf around the world? Um, uh, is also out, which、um, is is a good one. Okay, okay.、Um, well, we've got Santa and we've got Krampus there、um, next to each other, but、um, I'm going to get into a little bit of shading、um, uh, over these two characters.、Um, I'm just looking at the time, and it'd be nice to be able to add a few additional bits and pieces in、uh, to this character. So I think. We kind of did the, the shading the nice way last time, and I'm going to、mm. kind of do it the rough way this time. So,、ah. gonna, um, uh, so I've got a folder here which is、uh, Santa's color,、um, which I'm clicking on there,、um, which is just all of the colors that I've got for this one. What I'm, gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that folder, and I'm gonna flatten it. So now all the colors are on the same layer. I'm going to go Command Click on that layer so I can select the whole thing. And、now we've got a selection of everywhere that the、um, the, the colors are, and I'm going to make a mask out of that. So now you can see、um, the mask on my layer. I've got a nice clean clipping of all of all of Santa there. The reason I'm going to do that is、um, I'm just going to do all the lighting of this using an adjustment layer instead of painting all the colors individually. So、um, I'm going to make new. Uh, adjustment layer, which is going to be the、um, uh, hue saturation lightness one, which you can see just in the adjustments underneath the layers.、Um, and I'm going to change the shadow to kind of get something that I like. So I'm going to darken it a bit. I'm going to increase the saturation a bit. Sorry, we're getting a bit technical here.、Um, and、uh, now I'm going to.、Um, so I've got the, the shading that I want. Um, but I want to be able to paint that shading in. So now I can just paint into my adjustment layer,、um, and you'll see the the shading will appear, and it will apply over all the colors that I've got there. There you go. And、um, what? Because I know you could、um, use. Now I'm trying to remember it. The it's I don't know if it's adjustment layer. It's、um, blending mode, maybe of using multiply. Is there a reason why you're choosing to do it this way over? Over that, do you get more control?、Um, uh, yes,、uh, I definitely have used the、uh, the multiply、um, uh, filter to do a very very similar thing. But with this one,、uh, you're exactly right.、Uh, I've got a bit more control.、Um, uh, so this way, I'm, I'm painting into that layer, but I can reopen the layer any time and change the intensity of it or change oh. the. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. So、now I of, see. Now it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm just kind of applying this one filter over the whole、uh, picture,、um, but I've got lots and lots of flexibility、um, as I go on to sort of、um, uh, edit this.、Um, so right now I'm just kind of painting sort of really specific sections, but、uh, I want to speed it up even more. So I'm going to get a really, really big broad brush, and I'm going to sort of start painting whole sections in there. So Um, I'm just going to go with a really general approach. I'm just adding these big sort of areas of shade.、Um, and one way I like to to shade as well is to do it in really big broad strokes,、um, and then I'm going to sort of paint back into those.、Mm. Yeah,、um, I think、uh, Jeremy Lord probably uses a, a similar technique. Okay,、um, right. As well, yeah. There you go. Um, and I'm just sort of lightening up the areas that I want to stand out a bit more. And while you do that, we do have another question for you to、uh, ponder. Yes.、Uh, once again, from Alessandra, how did you find your style, and what is your favorite part of your style? Ah, very good questions. Thank you.、Um, 
so I'm I'm a, I'm a bit confused about the whole question of style because I, mm. I like I certainly have I think an identifiable way of drawing that's kind of developed naturally. But um, I love playing around with style. I love kind of trying different things um, uh, with style. So I'm always kind of um, exploring different approaches um, and, and and trying out different styles. But I, I understand the question. It's it's a perennial challenge of anybody getting into the art of, of sort of finding their their own voice. And I, for the most part, I would just say like having a style is uh, simply a matter of kind of time and repetition. I think if you're drawing long enough um, and doing enough drawings, um, sort of your the things that you like and the personality that you've got um, will naturally evolve over time. So, so it's one of those things that you can't really force. I think it's very difficult to sit down and say, I'm coming up with a, a style and I'm gonna stick with that. It's just one mm. of those things that has to slowly mature over time. And the other thing that I'd say is a lot of it's just kind of about stealing as well. <laughs> it's, it's about, uh, <laughs> about whole, wholeheartedly ripping someone off. But um, when I was a kid, I loved uh, Asterix and Obelix cartoons and I loved uh, Renaissance paintings by Botticelli. And I think <laughs> in many ways, um, so my drawing is sort of like you're, you're trying to copy someone's different style. And after you've copied, six artists that you particularly like mm. you're going to end up with something that's sort of a, a mush up of all those things in between and eventually that will sort of manifest into something that is uniquely yours so i think it's it's not good to sort of slavishly copy anybody's style or to um uh, try and replicate their work mm. but i think if you're starting out there is no shame in, in in sort of trying out other people's styles and finding the bits that you like and the bits that work for you um, because if you do it enough, it will turn into your own thing. Um, but yeah, I hope, I hope that helps. Um, and the question of, uh, what do I like about my own style? Um, oh, that's a good question. I can tell you lots of things I don't like about my own style. Um, <laughs> well, I'm sure you can. <laughs> um, uh, uh, things that I, uh, I do like about my own style. I mean, I really like uh line work like i think that's kind of the core of my mm. practice and stuff that i like i love um without any of the colors um if we were to sort of um get rid of all this kind of stuff i love really getting into the weeds of of sort of like what what is is good good line work and hatching and yeah. composition and things like that and that's the thing that really kind of does it for me that, that's the bit i, I like most and for for your line work and what has been a have you had like a, a big influence? I know you you love the works of Quentin Blake. Um, would you say that uh, he's been a big influence on your your approach to line work? Uh, I mean, he's a huge influence, but to be honest, I don't really do line work like him at all. Like sometimes mm. I try and copy his style, but um, um, the way that I render is very, very different to him. Um, I, Who's, who am I thinking of? Um, I mean, there's obviously lots of just like Marvel comics and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's a big influence. Um, but sorry, I'm just trying to think of the book that I have. Um, I think there's a lot of lot of uh, sort of, um, I think Arthur Rackham. Do you know Arthur Rackham? He's a British he illustrator. Familiar, he, sadly. He did like The Wind and the Willows and he did um, a lot of editions of um, sort of uh, Hans Christian Andersen sort of tales mm -hmm. and things like that but lots of sort of classic um, early 20th century book illustration Arthur Rackham I, I would look to that, that he's kind of my guy um, and another person I would definitely reference would be um, Aubrey Beardsley who's another British mm -hmm. illustrator at the same time with very very creepy drawings but incredibly good line work <laughs> nothing wrong with a creepy drawing I say um, I agree. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, I'm just going to add a bit of specific shadow um, to this dude's uh, um, And then when you've done this, I'm wondering if you're ready to to hear and take some suggestions for, for extra uh, items that we can um, populate the drawing with. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. Um, um, uh, yeah, I could kind of go on here forever. So um, 
let's, um, let's move on. So um, uh, last time we were doing this, we had a suggestion of um, adding in a fireplace. And I just so happened to have this prearranged fireplace that I've made. Um, uh, so I'm going to drop that in just to give us a bit of context. One thing I might quickly do is that um, while I like this fireplace, it is kind of cluttering the image a little bit, if you know what I mean. Mm. So I'm going to sort of knock that back. And the way I might do that is I, I want to kind of just incorporate it into the background a little bit. So I'm going to select uh, uh, that image. And then I'm over the top of it, I'm going to fill it in with the one big block of color. And then I'm going to sort of drop the opacity on that to sort of interesting add kind of like a colored filter to it a little bit mm. um and then what i might do is i might kind of accentuate the warmth of the fire because that's a big element uh behind them so i'm just going to get a really big soft brush um and i'm just going to sort of loosely paint some orange glow behind them as well um to add a little bit more of that um fire feeling uh, add a bit of yellow. And then what I might even do is I'm going to select all those elements of the fireplace. I'm going to convert them into a smart object. And I'm going to just give them a little bit of a blur. Now, oh, um, what have I done? Um, let's bring that in. I'm going to say OK. Now we've got the fireplace there, but you, as you can see, it's much more sort of knocked into the background. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not taking up too much. Um, of our of our characters. So yes, sorry, I'm ready to take on suggestions now. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, and we can chat briefly about the the library, the Christmas workshop you have uh, a bit later on. But based on what we got yesterday, and one extra edition from Manny, uh, we think milk and cookies for Santa, and mm -hmm. maybe a snow globe. Uh, milk and cookies for Santa, and maybe a snow globe. Okay, fantastic. Let me see what I can do. So um, yesterday, we also put in a little side table for Krampus here. Um, uh, so what, I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit and just sort of duplicate that. Um, that's and, not cheating. That's working smartly. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to put the table there, and then we can just work on top of that. So I'm just going to select that section of it, and we can get rid of that. Um, and then what was it again? Was it a cup of cocoa? Uh, yes, so milk and cookies for Santa, yep. um, and then also snow globe if if we have time for that. We have just reached um, beyond the halfway mark, uh, but knowing how quickly you draw, Bill, um, I think we have plenty of time left. Okay, cool, cool. So when I'm kind of adding to um, a a big composition, it's quite hard to sketch on top of something like this because there's so much going on already. I don't want to sort of mm. overcomplicate the drawing. So a way I like to go about that is um, just adding a new adjustment layer and um, upping the um, lightness of it. And that way um, I can kind of see see what's behind there, but it's kind of like having a, a fresh piece of paper to work on again. Mm. And that makes it just nice and clear. So um, let's get rid of that gigantic brush and we'll quickly, no, there's no time for sketching. We go straight into it. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to um, use a custom circle tool there. Um, one way I find really easy to make plates is to, um, so I'm doing the plate of cookies here. I've drawn the circle to the top of the plate, and now I'm just going to copy and paste the, um, a section of that circle and drag it down. And now we've got a big shape that's come together. And on top of that, I might start sketching in a couple of, a couple of cookies. Um, uh, let's put a few in there. And you and can see. Oh, you go. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm just drawing on the layer above, um, and um, instead of trying to incorporate it, um, and now I'm going to sort of just um, select those cookies and delete what's underneath it just to get rid of the line work. And I find that quite a good way of just kind of building up, building up sections of the drawing. Get a nice full glass of milk in there as well. Wonderful. 
And hello, Brittany, as well. Welcome to the stream. Um, saying that, of course, it makes perfect sense that they would have just bought two of the same table. I think uh, in in this scene, this is definitely um, a Christmassy castle or or some place where they both live. Um, perhaps during the uh, uh, Christmas night and uh, Saint Nicholas Day time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. They got the same armchair as well. They're very very matchy matchy. <laughs> Um, okay, great. Um, let's just color that in. So, um, I'm just going to put a fill layer underneath that. Um, let's go. And once I start adding the coloring, I just, um, turn off that, um, that, uh, adjustment layer that we had mm -hmm. so we can clearly see what we're working on. And again, I'm just going to start, uh, filling in the colors using the, um, paintbrush, I mean, sorry, the um, bucket fill tool into all the layers and that makes it nice and quick to um, uh, color in these these delicious chalk chip cookies that are going on. Ah, I knew they had to be chalk chip. Is that your favorite cookie, do you think? Uh, uh, you're asking the hard questions here. Uh, <laughs> I'm an all-time favorite cookie. It's just an, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite, um, I think it's just an Anzac cookie. I'm just such a fan of a, uh, oh. a good sort of muesli based or oats mm. based cookie. Um, I'm quite boring in that way. No, it's it's good to know what you like. I think. Uh, what uh, about you, Joanna? What's uh, what's your go-to? Okay, since it is Christmas time, I will say um, pep by Kaku, uh, which is like Swedish. Uh, like gingerbread snaps um, oh, wow. cookie. So it's like really thin gingerbread cookie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's got really nice, like crispy crunch to it. And you usually have that and dip it in milk um, and it is delicious. So that's probably the cookies that we would be putting out for Santa um, yeah. back home in Sweden, as opposed to uh, chalk chip or the uh, forbidden uh, rum raisin oatmeal Tricky. I know that's uh, a bit of a controversial take. <laughs> um, okay, cool. We've got uh, um, cookies and milk. And then our second suggestion, I think, was um, uh, a snow globe. Yes. Um, and I think, um, so I'm going to put my layer over the top. And I think for um, the needs of time, I said that we would get an acorn in there. So let's do an acorn yes. in a snow globe um, combination. So I'm going to draw a big circle there for a snow globe. Um, and then let's start working in the um, the bottom section of it. Um, so uh, in last stream, we used the, uh, the symmetry tool for drawing a little bit. Um, and I would do a similar thing here, but I might just sort of do the uh, dumbed down version of that, which is I'm just going to draw half the snow globe and then just copy and paste it to um, uh, the yes. duplication of it. So I'm just going to delete half of that shape and then I'm going to uh, duplicate it and stick it back together. I've got a nice. Ooh, there template. you go. Um, so let's uh, fill that in. Save my file. Uh, right, and then I should uh, start working on a little acorn to go inside there. And when I say acorn, um, people watching the screen, <laughs> I'm talking about my puppy is called acorn, not, not a physical acorn. Um, um, and now I'm going to done quite a few acorns by now, so I'm just going to um, try and be brave and go straight into line work for a, for an acorn here. Yay, yay. Um, brush size a little bit, give him a nice happy <laughs> smile. Oh, it's looking adorable already. Got those uh, nice long eyelashes in that we were talking mm -hmm. about. It's the, the famous eyelashes. <laughs> I don't think, I wonder if all dogs have really long eyelashes, or maybe it's just their sort of cavoodle, poodle, um, schmoodle uh, breed that, that has them. Because our, our family dog as well, which is also a cavoodle, um, has really long eyelashes. Um, oh, yeah. There you go. Well. yeah. 
Yeah, and I, I've always wondered, like, are they supposed to be that long? Um, and wonder if, if you know, we're supposed to, to cut them while we cut uh, the rest of her fur. Um, yeah, I think about that as well. I've got no idea. It feels somehow like I've got no problem with sort of trimming his nails and all that kind of stuff, but it feels yeah. like weirdly intrusive to cut someone's eyelashes. Right? Yeah. Too, like, too sensitive or something. Because <laughs> I don't know if there's any... You know, if it, if if we would um, trim them, if she would feel anything, um, and I also don't want if if they actually do help with you know keeping things out of her eyes or anything like that. Yeah. I don't want to remove that from her. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so it's a tricky absolutely. one. Yeah, very tricky. Chat, if you have any idea of of uh, the importance of dogs' eyelashes, please let us know. Yes, illustration or dog grooming tips, very much appreciated. <laughs> Um, okay, so we've got a little excitable acorn there. Oh, such a cutie. There. And also heads up that we are at the 15 minute mark. So we've got 15 minutes to go of this festive uh, stream. Yep, well there's, there's still time to add things in, so um, if anybody's got any suggestions or questions, <sighs> pack them in. Let's see. Well, I'll, while we wait for the chat to, to come up with some more questions, I'll throw in one of my own. Um, yep. Are you making any presents yourself this year? I, I think I remember you were talking about you made a present for for your now fiancé, I believe, last year. Um, oh, are you making any presents yourself? I can't remember this year? what it was, but I'm sure it was uh, well, uh, um, I'm actually getting married right before um, uh, right before Christmas. Um, uh, so, what uh, would have been uh, present making energy is all gone into um, uh, uh, preparations for the wedding. So, I've been um, actually making quite a few things for for that. So, I've made um, um, a sort of uh, I've made a big decorative wedding arch that um, we're getting married underneath, um, and um, uh, that's that's um, uh, been a lot of work, mm. um, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm part of a group of friends that send um, uh, Christmas uh, cards to each other. We make mm -hmm. make Christmas cards for each other and send those off. That's so um, sweet. Um, yeah, which is a really lovely tradition that we kind of started up. Um, but because I've been a bit pressed for time, um, I have to admit I'm going to double up this stream and the Christmas card making. So I'm afraid my friend is just getting a a printout of Krampus and Santa um, for, yeah. for his Christmas card this year. It'd be a um, lovely so surprise. Yeah, that's been the extent of my um, uh, um, creations for, for, for this year. What about yourself, Joanna? Have you made anything? Not yet, not necessarily. I have a couple of things that I'm making actively at the moment. Uh, okay. I haven't decided if any of that is going to become uh, Christmas presents, but we shall see. Actually, uh, more so, I'm excited about doing Christmas-related crafts with my family uh, when, when I come to visit. So I got these uh, plastic baubles from Kmart. So we're going to illustrate on those and make our own Christmas ornaments as oh, my wonderful. sort of um, assigned activity for yeah. for the um, for the holiday. Oh, that's nice. Uh, uh, something I've discovered recently is. Um, uh, pom pom makers to to make pom poms out of wool. Yes. Oh, you um, speaking right into my heart. I have several of them, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, because uh, part of the decorations that we're doing for the wedding, lots of lots of pom poms. So I've been watching TV and just sort of making my pom poms. Um, <laughs> Amazing. With, uh, quite a lot of those on the go. Um, all right, the snow globe is coming along nicely, so I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, um, piece de resistance of adding the actual snow, of course. Yes. Um, and because I've been in the Christmas illustration um, biz for a while, I've got my snow brush ready to go. Of course, of so course. I'll sprinkle a bunch of that in. So let's do some in front of Acorn, a bit behind him as well to really fill it out. Um, I'll just quickly add a little bit of shade. And while you're doing that, I just want to pass on congratulations. Um, to both you and your bride from chat. Um, uh, thank you very much, chat. Very excited. Oh, that's great. Um, yeah, no, it's it's, it's uh, very exciting. Um, 
Okay, there we go. Um, great, I'm going to put that into a folder and we've got um, um, <laughs> acorn snow globe at the front there. Um, okay, let's just pop him down there. Fantastic. Now, chat, we have 10 minutes almost exactly uh, left to go. So if you have any more suggestions for what we can put in into this uh, Christmas card illustration, do let us know. Um, and also, if you have any more questions uh, for Bill today, let us know um, what those are as well. Absolutely. Um, I'm just sort of putting in a bit of, to emphasize the light coming from behind these two characters, um, mm. just put in a sort of shadow layer, um, casting a bit of shadow in the foreground there. Um, to enhance that a little bit. I think we could go with a little bit more edge light around Santa. Um, mm. I'll pick a little bit of that in as well. Okay. Did you say that your family is coming to visit Joanna? Yes, so I will actually be um, visiting them. So I'll be traveling all the way to the Shire. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, Most trusted uh, place in the world. Exactly. No, there's going to be uh, a lot of um, Santa surfing and Santa in Hawaiian shirts for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, so cool. I'm excited about that. Wonderful. And let's see. Ooh, we have it. Amazing question from Alessandra here. Uh, yep. Last minute advice for new artists or illustrators? Last minute advice. Um, mm. um, I'm wondering if you mean last minute in terms of last minute of the stream or um, uh, we're just looking for general advice. Um, I think um, interpret as you will. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, uh, my, my boilerplate piece of advice um, for, for artists is um, uh, just to draw uh, all the time. Uh, I know that sounds obvious, but um, uh, you gotta you gotta find ways to enjoy it so you can do it absolutely all the time. Um, and that's that's the way that you'll get better and discover new things. Um, uh, so as much as you can sort of keep up the consistency of it, um, mm. that, that's always gonna always gonna help things. Um, my other piece of advice for um, aspiring artists is that. Um, there's, there's so many new opportunities of uh, different styles and ways to draw and ways to make money in illustration uh, these days. It's really, really good um, in that it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great time to be doing different stuff in illustration. But um, I would say that there's actually not as many people going into the industry with um, just a, a good knowledge of technical drawing anymore. Um, there, there's not many places in Australia to study it. Um, uh, and therefore, there's a there's a real demand for people who can draw figures accurately and draw buildings and interiors and things like that. So I, I think you kind of got to do both things at, at the same time and sort of exploring all the exciting avenues that exist for creatives out there. But I think if you want to get into art or illustration, um, find a life drawing class and do some do some of the old old traditional stuff. Um, and I think if you can do both those things at the same time, then you'll be in a really good position. That's my Speed yeah, advice. Solid advice. Solid advice. And yes, it was uh, for the last minute of the stream. Uh, but I like that you could kind of interpret that however you want. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, great. Well, um, um, uh, I'm really happy with how this one's come, come together. It's yeah. got a, a, a nice vibe to it. Um, um, yeah, uh, no, I, I, I like the contrast between the two of them. I might go back and sort of spend a bit more time on on Santa here um, mm. and sort of get him to the same level as of Render. But uh, yeah, it's been, yeah, make sure really... Santa doesn't put you in the naughty list for not rendering yeah. him as much as Krampus. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you so so much for for joining us, Bill. Now, where can people uh, find more of your work? Um, maybe to buy Christmas presents for their family and uh, take oh, more well. of your stuff online. Yeah, that's very kind. I mean, you can just uh, Google my name, which is Bill Hope, um, and you'll find websites and Instagrams and, and the rest of it. And uh, you should find some links to um, the Where's Santa's Elf um, uh, books as well. Um, uh, so they're always available. Um, 
uh, yeah, and definitely get in touch if anybody wants to chat. Um, um, I'm always available. And uh, we've done quite a few of these now, Joanna. So you can go yeah. onto YouTube and there is hours of my face. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, 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 going around. So, um, yeah, plenty of places to find me. But, um, yeah, thanks so much, everyone, for joining in. And I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Absolutely. Yeah, this is our last stream of 2022. So on behalf of Flynn uh, and myself, I uh, want to wish everyone a happy festive season, um, however you uh, celebrate it uh, or don't. I hope it's safe and you're uh, with uh, friends and family or those that you care about. And we will, of course, be back in 2023 for more exciting streams. Uh, definitely more streams with Bill, um, for sure. But uh, have a wonderful rest of your day or morning or evening uh, or whatever time it is that you're tuning in. And uh, thank you so much for, for watching. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone. And thanks, Joanna. Um, um, it's been lovely chatting and drawing with you. <laughs> My pleasure, as always. Have a great one, everyone. See ya.